Hey, this is Ulrich Dempfler, founder of Carol. And if you're looking to be in better health and learn more about biohacking, then you should be listening to the Hacked Live podcast with my good friend, Joel Evan. All right, I'm here with Ulrich Dempfler, the CEO and co-founder of Carol AI bikes. This is a company, guys, behind the AI-powered exercise bike that you see me on all the time. And it gives you scientifically proven rehit, which stands for Reduced Exertion Intensity Interval Training, a workout in under nine minutes. Ulrich, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to get into some stuff. Um, you know, some of the things that your company's behind and some of the things you guys post pretty remarkable right like some of the stats let's just i'll just read some of them off steady state cardio exercise right in 20 percent of the time just 26 minutes a week in eight weeks you guys are seeing things like vo2 max increase 12.3 percent type 2 diabetes lowered 62 mm percent -hmm. burn twice as many calories compared to traditional exercise i mean how is this possible uh, we, you know people are not going to believe this i'm really curious though before <laughs> like we even jump into all of that like, hmm. how, what is your background? Like, how did you get started uh, doing this? And like, was there a day you realized like, oh my God, I have to, I, I want to disrupt the fitness industry. There's a major problem here. Yeah, I mean, uh, first it's true. There's some pretty awesome and unbelievable claims really, but they are true. And um, when, when I first heard them, uh, frankly, I had nothing to do with the fitness industry at all. So. I'm a mechanical engineer. Yeah, so I've, uh, I grew up in, in, in German automotive industry, but then actually spent most of my life in healthcare. And uh, together with my co-founders, we've been, we've been working in healthcare to, to set up chronic disease management programs. Um, so helping people with long-term conditions, um, diabetes, other metabolic or, or cardiovascular conditions to, to, to live healthier. And for, for, for those types of people, the most powerful intervention uh, and, and in, in many ways kind of with least side effects and, and cheapest and so on is exercise, yeah, uh, very clearly. But um, it's quite difficult to get people to exercise. So there's some, <laughs> yeah. some pretty also unbelievable kind of surveys uh, as to kind of uh, just how few people exercise and, and what excuses they have. So even even people who had like a cardiac event and where the doctor basically said you have to exercise, um, kind of the, the majority still doesn't exercise. And if you if you survey them, they they say they don't have time for it. Now it might be an excuse, but time is a pretty big barrier. Yeah. And so so we were stranded with that. Um, and then we came across the science of rehit. Um, uh, in a BBC show, actually. So, um, and this is all the way back in 2012. Yeah. So we saw um, the BBC, uh, our, our kind of live television here. Um, we're based in London. Um, kind of showcased the science of rehit, and it was really like I fell in love with it um, at first sight. Yeah, because. Um, yeah. So they had the, 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 the professors, the scientists there, they showcased it. They were showing their stats, the, the results from their trials um, and the amazing results they've, they've achieved. And we, we thought like, wow, this must be the answer. Yeah. So, yeah. so we thought, uh, like we, we basically wanted to kind of, you know, just do it and um, apply it for ourselves, for, 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 for the patients we worked with. Um, and then it turned out it's it's actually not as easy as just doing it. So um, I went out, I mean, literally the very next day, I went uh, to, to kind of a big fitness store and I had watched the show very carefully and everything, how they've explained the science and the, the exercise and, and bought myself um, a stationary exercise bike, which I thought was most suitable for this type of workout. And, and I tried it and was really disappointed that I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was um, because it was so, uh, you know, like all these great claims. Yeah. 
Um, and then and then I bought myself a bike and I was like, no, it doesn't work. It's not easy at all. It's really tough and and I, I sweat like uh, nothing. And it's it's I, I found it really hard. Yeah. And so yeah. we 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 called up the the scientists and asked them kind of what what, what is actually happening. So you 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 go on television and you sell this fantastic thing. Yeah. And we go out and try it and. And we can't do it. What, what, what's up? And so then they said, yeah, well, you need a special bike for this. It's like, oh, you <laughs> didn't mention that. Um, <laughs> and it turns out, so obviously there, there is specialized equipment or there was specialized equipment before Carol um, entered the arena. Um, but those boys were kind of specialized research equipment. First, very expensive, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars wow. $20,000. And manually operated. And uh, not, not just by one person, but by a second person. So, so they had like a lab technician standing next to, to the bike. The, the subject did the, the workout. Yeah. And, and the lab technician basically applied the resistance at exactly the right time and, and coached the subject through the exercise. Mm. And, and so they... You know, they, they, we, we met up with them and then they basically operated the bike and showed it to us and it, it all made sense. But it's like um, there was just no consumer friendly, easy to use equipment on the market. Yeah. And so then we, we thought, like, if this doesn't exist, maybe we should develop something. And there yeah. kind of, yeah, my background as a mechanical engineer. And so at the um, basically we, we did this first on the side um, that we developed the first prototype, second prototype, did some trials, third prototype, I lost count of how many prototypes. <laughs> um, and, and then basically built um, a computer controlled, fully automated bike that basically makes it very, very easy to, to perform this rehit, reduced exertion, high intensity interval training. Um, and that, basically then also personalizes the rides for you that gives you metrics that allows you to track your performance and so on. And over time that became the, the main part of our business. And to, for, for uh, a few years now, that's all we do. Um, somebody else has to do the chronic disease management programs, but at least they have now a good tool for exercise. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's kind of the, the genesis of how we got to it. But uh, no, we're, we're absolutely not, um, kind of industry insiders. We, we really came from the outside and, um, you know, just loved uh, this, this science essentially and yeah. thought, how can, we, how can we actually apply that and bring that to a broad audience? I always find when people in different industries come in, that's sometimes the best. That's usually mm. the best way to be disruptive is having a... Yeah, it's a, it's a fresh it. perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Because um, I guess... Uh, in terms of penetrating the market, it's be because we, we come with quite a different approach. Um, obviously, that kind of poses some challenges. So we've, we've been speaking with all the, the big box um, gym formats, but there's like, mm, that's a bit difficult. So we've got there now 20 stationary bikes, 20 treadmills, 20 ellipticals. And you want us to put a Carol bike next to it? <laughs> And tell people that, like, oh, forget about this. That's yeah. you, you. You got it all wrong. Long, steady state cardio. Yes, if you enjoy it, fine. But you don't really have to do it if you can do it quicker. <laughs> so, yeah. Hence, we're we're found more in you know innovative studios, um, and and obviously we're we're selling directly to consumers. Yeah, you know, you mentioned a couple of things. Um, you mentioned rehit, and then hit. So I'm curious because a lot of people probably don't understand, like, what's the big difference? Everybody knows about hit mm. training. It's very popular. How yeah, does this sure. idea of rehit, how is that different? Yeah, sure, sure. So hit is, is quite well known, high intensity interval training. And um, its effectiveness, uh, very clear, very well established. The only problem with it, it's still pretty hard and um, it's not that time efficient. So most hit programs last... 20, 30 minutes more um, and are actually perceived as very difficult to perform because you do kind of a greater number of intervals, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, 
the sprints last longer or the intervals last longer, 30, 40 seconds, sometimes a minute. And so the, the, the amount of exertion and kind of just how difficult it feels is still fairly high. So obviously it works, it has proven results. Um, and then rehit is basically the, the, the end results, the end result of trying to titrate it back and back and back to what's the minimum effective dose of hit. And so it has only, rehit um, has only two sprints that are only 20 seconds long. Yeah, uh, so you have a little bit of warm up, first sprint, first recovery, second sprint, and then a cool down. And so the whole workout lasts eight minutes, 40 seconds. And where, where hit um, offers basically high intensity training, rehit, offers maximum intensity training. So you, uh, you, you take the, the minimum amount of time, but you, you do go, you do push your body to your limits at that point. So def therefore it's quite important that you get the right resistance and that the whole um, process is automated and that you're, you're properly coached through that um, by, by the bike. Um, so you, you actually hit maximum intensity. So you, you trade, um, time versus intensity and um but because it is so short it is actually a lot easier um to perform yeah okay really cool and then th that's another thing you just mentioned the resistance and the intensity and so i think a lot of people there might be confusion around well why do i really need this bike like mm -hmm. and you kind of alluded to it too and i always think too like um one of my favorite exercises before carol was getting on um, one of those like erg kind of uh, not not the erg bikes but the um, airdyne bikes and i mm -hmm. would do sure, wingate sure. exercises and i would yeah. do like a 30 second all out as hard as i could for 30 mm -hmm. seconds and then rest for four minutes and then come back and do it and so part of the thinking is why not why not just do that why do i need mm -hmm. why do i need carol like how does that how does maybe ha and it probably ties into the ai technology yeah yeah sure so um and this goes back to my initial story so I, I imagine that um, uh, somebody who's, you know, like, like Dr. Niels Follett, who, who invented that thing, he could probably perform this type of exercise on, on, on different equipment as well. But to make it simple, it, it is very useful to have a bike that's specialized. And um, now just to describe it, to, to really get to max intensity. So you, you need to apply the, the right resistance that is kind of optimal for you. Um, and it's not easy to, to guess that, yeah? Um, then you have to apply it at the right time. Um, and that is basically you, if, on a Carol bike, you start pedaling very, very fast before the resistance kicks in. Um, so you build up pace and you build up um, a little bit of, uh, yeah, pace. Um, and then at exactly the right time, very, very quickly, the resistance gets applied from zero to your personalized level yeah. um, so that you have a, a really rapid onset of, um, of, of energy demand because that, that is really critical for, you know, why the exercise works. Now, um, doing this, basically kind of pedaling really fast and then dialing the right resistance in just at the right time, that would be really hard to do um, without like, um, say a personal trainer by your side or an exercise physiologist, whereas yeah. Carol just automates that. And then there, there are other benefits um, that you, um, you know, you can see all your data and you get your metrics and you see how you perform, you see how you perform against others in your, in your age bracket um, yeah. and so on that you, that you wouldn't get from uh, an air bike, for example. But it, yes, there's, um, I'm sure there's, um, you know, for somebody who, who knows what to do, um, maybe they can mimic it. And as I said, like the research was done before our bikes were done, made, yeah. yeah? Um, but this is for sure the easiest um, uh, way to perform rehit and to get it right. And, um, you know, because, the, because of the, the special mechanism why rehit work, it is, it works. Uh, and, why it creates those benefits it is quite important to get it right 
Yeah, and then on that note, on the in the resistance level, do you have any advice for, for owners and people that have the bike? I think mine was like automatically set to 60 or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, do you, like how do you know whether to ratchet up? Is it like should I be ratcheting up my resistance? Or is it better in a sense, I'm sure there's some kind of balance, but is it better, for example, when I do the bike, the first four seconds, you see this really nice incline, and then mm. I kind of plateau because it gets really hard. Yeah, and yeah. then I slowly dip down for the next, you know, 16 seconds. It, would it be better for me to, like, get to, like, say, six seconds before I start to dip? Or, I mean, mm -hmm. do we know that? So, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Of course. Of course. So, first, <laughs> the, um, <Yes. laughs> the, the resistance So happy to level. have you on. Um, so, I uh, and, and that's a perfectly normal, and this is how the profile should look like. So you, um, you, you really, you just start sprint uh, pedaling as fast as you can, kind of when the screen goes red before the sprints, yeah. the machine tells you accelerate now. Yep. Um, then the resistance kicks in and there's some residual momentum in the flywheel. And that's why it kind of your peak power um, doesn't, basically happen or, or doesn't get recorded right at the beginning of the sprint, but right. after a kind of three, four seconds into the sprint. And um, it's perfectly normal that you have basically a short peak. Um, and that in some ways it's indicative that this is actually your peak power, because if, it, if, it, if you could hold it for, uh, for longer, then um, well, the resistance wasn't high enough for you and it wasn't your peak power. So kind of your peak power is basically what you can hold for a fraction of a second. And then, uh, no, it's entirely intended that you fatigue throughout the sprint and, and that your power drops off. And in fact, that's um, kind of the, the AI algorithm that then um, from right to right personalize the resistance. Um, they, they basically um, analyze your ride and see how quickly you fatigued and um if you if you you know that's um uh, and there, there this is the beauty of having um the largest rehit data set in the world um is that we we can run yeah. um quite advanced analysis over that and so basically we know we know uh, kind of everything about but well, not everything about you but we know quite a lot about you we know how <laughs> you perform that, yeah. and we know i mean yeah. how you yeah, exercise I know, I know. Just yeah um yeah. Uh, and, and that in the context of, of thousands and thousands of others. Um, and thereby we can train algorithms that then optimize and personalize um, your resistance so that you're always um, kind of challenged, but not over challenged. So uh, definitely you should fatigue and you should see that drop off. And if, if you're basically, if you're pushing through it for, for too long, the 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 machine will make it harder for you next time and thereby kind of automatically adjusting the resistance to to kind of just find the right spot for you um and and that's that's really is you just go all out every time and and the resistance will kind of increase or reduce to to match what you need for your max intensity to reach your max intensity yeah awesome and you know we were talking offline before we jumped on here and I was saying, yeah, I'm doing about two to three times a week. And I said, there was, there was a, there was a time period where I think it said, you know, I, mm -hmm. I logged in like seven, seven times out of like eight days. And mm -hmm. I thought maybe yeah. that's not a good thing. And you said, no, that's fine. You said, and maybe you could speak on that. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of people like me who, who do that sometimes, yeah. but. So our, our recommendation is three times a week because that's, um, that has the most robust research. Most of the studies were done with three times a week, and it's absolutely certain that three times a week is enough. And I mean, the, the Carroll bike is um, really made for people who are time poor. And, and therefore, you know, three times a week uh, is probably what most people would go with. There, there are some yeah. studies that actually showed that two times a week might also be enough to, to maintain your fitness levels. Um, but other way around, we, we do have users who, um, who, who want to use the bike more. Um, I'm one of them. Uh, and and we, we have discussed that with the, with the researchers be, behind Rehit. And while overtraining certainly is a thing, um, 
and if you wanted to use the bike every day, you, you could, for example, um, use one day the 20 second sprints and then the off day the 10 second sprints. So you could vary a bit. But even uh. if you do the, the, the 20 second sprints, so the, the full rehit uh, protocol, um, even if you do that every day, because the, 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 the total exertion is so short that um, the researchers we work with and, and we don't have a concern if you did it every day. And so uh, I, I said earlier, no, I, I do probably five times a week, um, sometimes six times a week. Uh, and, and definitely I don't feel a, kind of a, a negative effect. Yeah. And the, the, the thing is, what, why do I do it uh, five or six times a week if I only had to do it three times a week? Um, this is something about habit, yeah? Yeah. Um, there are certain things I do every morning, <laughs> uh, I, I, and I don't have to think about them, yeah? I brush my yep. teeth, I shave, I have a shower, blah, 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 all that, yeah? And so Carol has just become part of that routine for me. It's, it's easier for me to do a Carol ride rather than think about whether I should do a Carol ride. Um, and that's, that's, I think, because habits are really quite powerful. If you don't have to, yeah. if you don't have to think about it and you just automatically do it. And that's, that's the state I've reached with Carol. And it's, it's easy because I've got it at home and I don't have to, I don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. I just do it every morning. Um, pretty much first thing. Um, and, and it's, it's a very easy habit for me. Yeah. I mean, and you're living proof of the bike. I know you know, some of the stats for you, your cardiovascular mm -hmm. health improved like 50% mm -hmm. and you Absolutely, lost about yeah. 10 kilograms of weight, which, uh, you know, for us in the U.S. in pounds, that's like, what, almost close to like 20 25, pounds, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 over, so yeah. Pretty sick. And you didn't really change anything else. That was like the one thing you added. So, so remarkable. I mean, uh, look, I, I do th I, I do want to say the, um, so nutrition is important. Yeah. Um, for sure. And I'm, I'm not... Um, you know, I, I, I do from time to time, I, I do some fasting. I do almost, um, like I try to, um, I, usually I don't really have breakfast that much. I have like, you know, bulletproof coffee or something like that. Yeah. Um, so so um, I, I think it induces also a healthy lifestyle. Like you, you make one change and then you do other changes and so on. So um, uh, I, I, and I, I think it's, uh, it should be clear to most people that you can't just um, kind of start um, exercise and, and eat whatever you want and, and expect a weight reduction. That's, that's not how, how it works. It isn't. But I do think that um, Carol really um, supports and rehit supports weight management and makes weight management a lot easier. And this is, uh, I think, certainly um, kind of just the, the, the calorie burn. So even though um, the, the exercise yeah, you, is very, very short. Can you talk short. about that, Ulrich? The, uh, you mentioned that in, in the studies, the afterburn. And, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'd love to hear uh, more about how it's burning twice the amount of calories uh, for people mm -hmm. because of this afterburn effect. I mean, that's really Sure, sure. So um, it's something called um, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. And we've done a study with... Um, Western University at uh, Colorado um, and looked at the amount of this epoch or afterburn um, after different types of exercises. And in a steady state, like, like moderate intensity training, you get like 10, 20% afterburn um, or even like vigorous uh, exercise, you get 10, 20% afterburn. And with Carol, you actually burn 70% of the calories after you've got off the bike. So the, wow. the, the kind of in those eight minutes, 40 seconds, because it's really, really short, um, you, you, you know, you burn a moderate amount of calories, but if you, if you tracked it on your Apple watch, you'd probably go like, Oh, what's this? Um, but because 70% of the calorie consumption comes afterwards, um, because you're uh, kind of just your metabolism is elevated and you're, you're basically um, kind of this type of exercise creates um, uh, it basically it, it mobilizes and um, you know lots of glycogen and, and you'll have to, to metabolize it afterwards um, and, and kind of uh, some of the waste products that um, happen so 70% of the of the calorie consumption comes kind of in the 
in the hours after the exercise. And so for me, it's um, when I do, uh, the, the bike tells you that, and we've, we've got good data for that. So uh, for me, it's like these um, eight minutes, 40 seconds, create a, a calorie burn of around 215 calories. That's about 10% of my, um, of my like baseline need. So it's not insignificant, that's one thing. Um, and then the second thing is that, that um, rehit has been shown to uh, improve uh, insulin sensitivity. And so insulin is really important kind of how you store energy and how you access energy stores. Um, and uh, I, I think, so, so what it does, I think, is it helps you um, access, for example, fat um, stored in your adipose tissue. And, and therefore, um, you, you can also have longer fasting windows or, or periods with, with low calorie intakes without having this burning hunger because you, you do actually have energy. Yeah. Um, and so that's, I, I think, um, a mechanism where Carol and Rehit is like really helpful and makes it easier to manage your weight. Obviously, nutrition super important. Have to yeah. watch nutrition too. I don't want to. I don't want to leave anybody with the impression that it's just kind of um, it, it all pill. happens by yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's, it's like the next best thing, and some of the claims are almost like a magic pill. But um, it, it's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in in just some of the studies that you guys have done, right? You have in eight weeks. I mean, people with, that were type two diabetics, you know, lowered mm -hmm. their by, were lowered by 62%. Like, that's not insignificant. Like, that's pretty, mm. that's pretty no, good, it's, right? It's, it's very significant. So, uh, and there's, that's um, the study you refer to um, was, was entirely independently conducted. Um, so the, the American Council of Exercise, which is kind of a nonprofit, the largest nonprofit in that, um, in that arena, and whose remit it is to, to basically evaluate um, kind of uh, also amongst their remit is to evaluate new forms of exercise and, and give recommendations. Um, they, they saw uh, basically our claims and said like, okay, sounds nice, but we want to try that. Um, and so they, they bought a couple of bikes from us and then commissioned um, uh, without our involvement, Western University in Colorado and did a um, an eight week study with, with a control group that did moderate intensity exercise. And uh, the, the intervention group that did uh, rehit on the Carol bikes. Yeah, no, and the, the results, I mean, uh, we, we, we were very, very happy to, and, and almost, you know, I, I mean, it, it, could, it couldn't have been better. Um, right. the, the, the participants saw in, in eight weeks an improvement of, of 12 point three percent in vo2 max so so cardio respiratory fitness um and that's yeah that's very significant that's that's basically reversing um 10 years of of fitness loss yeah yeah and, talk about that and, because people don't understand vo2 max like big deal 12 percent. like that doesn't sound like yeah. that much but oh, it is. It is. So VO2 max is, we'll your, is your ability to, to basically burn oxygen um, and metabolize oxygen. And it is, um, it is kind of the most important marker or it's, the, the, it's a measurement for cardiorespiratory fitness. And it's also probably the most important predictor of future health. Um, and um, so a 10% improvement in VO2 max would translate to a, um, a gain of two years of healthy life expectancy. So that, that is very significant. So people are in living terms longer of, with the, when the VO2 max absolutely. Wow. And, and then the, the other thing is how you feel. So um, after the age of 30, kind of you lose on average about 10% of your VO2 max per decade. So now with you know, really quite minimal time requirement. You could dial back your fitness levels by more than a decade. And so therefore feel younger. Now that that's pretty, that, yeah. that's pretty good. And it's, it's not subtle at all. It's, it's really um, very noticeable. And so if you, if you put in the time there, um, you'll, um, you, you will definitely feel the, and 
when when I say put in the time, like put in the very little yeah. time. Put, really. put in the put in the forty seconds of work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You you will you will definitely notice the difference. So that's that's one thing about fitness, and the other thing is just uh, uh, being healthier, and that's um, so uh, metabolic health. Uh, and what they've um, measured there was um, kind of a basket of uh, uh, of markers that form together. So that's uh, things like um, blood pressure, blood sugar. Um, uh, uh, high density lipoprotein, triglycerides, um, like like your waist circumference, things like that. Is uh, kind of five markers that form the METS Z score, which is a risk score of developing metabolic diseases like type two diabetes. And in eight weeks, the risk score was reduced by sixty two percent on average in the intervention group. And that's the level of change you'd see um, from, from taking medication like metformin. So again, it's, it's really um, kind of quite remarkable what you can actually achieve with a very minimal amount of time. And now I, I, I should say in the control group that did moderate intensity exercise, yeah? Um, so they did basically the, the recommended two and a half hours uh, of, of moderate intensity exercise, so basically running or, or jogging per week. They, they also saw an improvement. Um, but uh, so, for example, their risk reduction was, um, was 27% in, in, in uh, eight weeks. So mm -hmm. uh, exercise, th this is what I said initially, exercise is undoubtedly one of the most worthwhile things and the best things you could do to you. Um, but with, with Carol, you basically get double the benefit, and the same was true for VO2 max, in, yep. in, in about 20% of the time. So if, you're, yep. if, you're, um, you know, if time is an issue for you, um, this rehit is a very, very time efficient way of achieving um, really quite remarkable health and fitness benefits yeah i love that and that's why i became a user because time is a mm. value for me and by the way i sure. hate doing cardio i hate it mm. i think yeah. long yeah. bouts of cardio just it bores me my mind just mm. I, I don't like it that intense burst i love that and like mm. you would think too i think you know for some people it's like well doing 20 seconds of an all-out sprint or something like that <laughs> is that enough to keep me Entertain because mm -hmm. some people like to be entertained when they're working out. Mm -hmm. I I guess I don't gravitate that way, but every time I get on the bike, I I am entertained because I'm like, all right, let me see if I can beat my last score. Absolutely. So it's yeah. I am gamifying mm -hmm. it for me, and that's what keeps me coming back. And then I'm exhausted in that you know yeah. after that yeah. second sprint. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah. No, and and uh, so the you're right. The twenty seconds or for the the sprints. Um, it's it's kind of short enough to 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 go all out without without really hurting so yeah. even if you did um like like 30 second sprints it uh, doesn't sound much difference right 20 second 30 seconds but 30 second sprints are a lot more brutal um because that that last these last four, few seconds are really the hardest so yeah um Having well, you guys the have minimum. the 10 second, 15 and 20, mm -hmm. and there's a big yeah, difference between right. a 10 second and a 20. I can tell you that. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, if, if, um, if 20 seconds is too hard for you, yes, by all means do the shorter ones better doing those than, than, than none, you will also get a benefit, but, but 20 seconds is kind of in our view in, in terms of like the, the cost benefit, uh, 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 ratio is is best for those because you get really kind of uh, awesome results and it's quite doable so yeah. i find um <laughs> in some ways it, it it only hurts when you're already through it yeah so so yeah. um if if i talk about kind of when i push through the the 20 second sprints um obviously uh, i i notice that i work hard but the moment that i find um in some ways toughest it's just kind of the just afterwards when i'm kind of catching up with my breath and i kind of noticing yeah. this was hard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
for people also I should just note you know for people that mm -hmm. do and I haven't explored with this but for people that do want to be more entertained or do the longer workouts Carol does have a function right where you can integrate it with the Peloton app and some some other apps I think out there right mm -hmm. so that's that's right so first you have um, we, we have a number of different programs and you you can so for example if you wanted um, to just like burn the maximum amount of calories um, we, we have, we, we call it the fat burn ride, which is shorter and slightly lower intensity sprints. Um, but you, you do a higher number of them. You do like 30 or 60 and there yeah, you'll, Ulrich, you'll sweat can, a lot. And can you talk about that one and how that one got created? I was wondering if there's any studies behind that. And from mm -hmm. what I recall, I, I I'll do that one in between. I, I just to change things up. It's mm -hmm. like a 12 second, I believe sprint or eight second sprint with a 12 second rest and you do like 30 That's, rounds of it it's it's it, it, it's uh, it's challenging absolutely yeah so while on the intense ride um you know it's it's actually fairly easy to i, I find it's fairly easy to do obviously it's yeah i'm, I'm so used to it the yes. the fat burn ride you you will um you will sweat buckets and and it is really a a a fat burner and calorie burner. And yes, so everything we do has solid science behind us, it. And it's, it's a, another protocol like workout type that was, that was researched. And, um, that, that showed, um, I think this, this study was, uh, specifically done with, uh, with women, um, that the, the, the fat loss, um, was was uh, kind of much greater than, uh, an, an equivalent amount of, of, like uh, steady state exercise. So yes, that, that has been specifically um, designed for, for uh, weight loss. And we would, um, I think we, like our recommendation is to, everybody should do those rehit rides. I think they're a fantastic uh, foundation. And, um, and then if, you're, if your main focus is not so much on fitness gain, but on, on weight management and weight loss, then you can add, um, I don't know, like a, a couple of, of those fat burn rides in each week to, yeah. to just, um, they, they also have a phenomenal amount of afterburn. So there you also see uh, kind of over 70% of the, of the um, energy burn afterwards, but there you, you also have like a really significant um, uh, amount of calorie burn on the bike. And so it's, it's kind of just adds up. Um, so that's one. And then you have the, the ability to, you know, use the bike as a normal bike and you can use, um, so yes, the Peloton digital app, you, you could have it. So you, you, you need a separate subscription for that, but mm -hmm. it, it runs on our bike and you can follow the classes and, and, you know, how I would, uh, how I look at that, like many people, you know, have more than one person in the household and, and you might have different tastes and different preferences and so on. So, um, if, if, if you have somebody in the household who really wants kind of just the shortest possible ride, somebody else who might also want, um, kind of instructor led classes, you, you can, and we have, uh, and this is, this is, uh, coming out, uh, this January. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe by the time this airs, um, it's yeah. already out. You can also use it with um, with uh, Swift, for example. I don't know. This is a very popular app with uh, with with uh, you know like cycling athletes, amateur cycling yeah. athletes, who who want to do um, you know kind of you 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 race through a virtual world, and and you can do that very as well. Cool. So there's um, uh, I. I I mean, the, the reason why people buy our bike is because of rehit, but then it's kind of like, can you do other things with it? Yes. You can also do other things with it. Yeah. I wanted to ask you too, you know, one of the measurements that you guys calculate is called this octane score. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a selfish question, but I want to know how to get my octane score higher. <laughs> I want to, I want to be on the charts. I'm trying to get on the charts mm -hmm. with some of these guys, high level yeah. people out there. Yeah. 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 So, um, First, what, what is the octane score? It's our fitness yeah. score. It's um, a measure of your cardiorespiratory fitness. And it basically measures um, how many heartbeats you need to, to churn out a certain uh, kind of basically the, the power over your ride, yeah? like a certain energy output. Um, uh -huh. 
and um, it, it basically reflects what happens as you get fitter and stronger. So you, um, uh, there, there are actually studies on that, yeah, that you, um, uh, as your heart gets stronger, you need less heartbeats um, to perform a certain, like a, a workout. Like you get stronger, your, your energy output goes up, and at the same time, your heart rate recovers quicker and you need, um, you, you, you basically need less heartbeats. Um, and you, you get better at both um, oxygen utilization and you get better at oxygen delivery. And, and that's what the Octane score, our fitness score measures. And there's, there's one thing, just to be clear, um, that is like an absolute measure. Yeah, so, so if somebody is like really, uh, same as VO2 max is an absolute measure. So if you have like uh, an American football player or a big rugby player who's just huge, um, they will have kind of just, uh, uh, they will have a higher score um, than, uh, than like, uh, you know, like a small um, slender. Smaller framed athlete uh, like me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, good. Now so, I feel so but bad. then you, you can, if you, if you, uh, you, you know, it's like, um, we, we both we offer alternative metrics, both power per pound and octane score per pound. So where we where we normalize it for weight. So that would be kind of then something to look at where you can, you know, can compete regardless of your weight. And yeah. um, you know, like we we have um, my my wife is is very sporty, but she's she's skinny and and short <laughs> and and um she she doesn't score that highly on the on the absolute measure but she does very well on the octane score per pound cool and then just one more question on the bike you know one of the mm -hmm. when you're looking at the bike on the screen it has a, a your cadence and then it mm -hmm. also shine, kind of shows you uh, like how aggressively you're you're pedaling i'm just curious like why is cadence important for us when we're on the bike why should we, why is that something important to pay attention to and then is it really critical when you are, you know, when you're in your resting state, um, you're not going through your all out sprint, the bike will show you kind of a blue zone and then a red zone. Is it really critical to stay under that blue zone? Because you're pedaling for me, it's pretty slow. Um, mm -hmm. And is that and we want to do that? Huh? I think as some of us, mm -hmm. you know, alpha, you know, I got to always be going harder. Should I be going harder? But I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So um, uh, cadence it's your pedal speed. And uh, certainly we, um, before the resistance kicks in, we want you to, to basically go as fast as you can and, and hit there the, the, the red area in, in a way. Um, so that's, um, it's, it's, it's a useful indicator. Um, and there's, again, linked to, the, to our algorithms, there is actually such thing as, as um, Kind of an optimal cadence so we, we take that into consideration when we um when we calculate the personalized resistance for you so when we look at your power profile we also look at your cadence profile and that goes into the into the algorithm on the screen it's a little bit for information but it's it's a it's a metric that um you know some some people want it if, you, if yeah. you're not too bothered by it don't get distracted by it okay um and then about the resting periods. So the that's that's how we look at the at the um, the the um, the sprint. The, the the resting periods are actually not all that important. Um, so the all the magic happens in the two twenty second sprints. Got it. Um, but, um, and in fact, so we, we have, uh, again, this is uh, kind of, we, we have that uh, in beta now for quite a while and it, it's, it's coming out to, to everybody um, before the end of the month, actually, um, that you can shortcut the warm up and the first recovery. So if, if eight minutes, oh, wow. 40 seconds was too long for you, you could um, actually compress the whole exercise to 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 just um, well to five minutes exactly. Um, wow! Very so cool. if you're if you're really pressed for time, you can do that. The um, the one part that that is important is the cool down. Yeah. Mm. So um, 
we we we're okay. Like we're we're not that um, you know like what you do in the warm up and in the first recovery is a bit like up to you. Um, in the cool down, we'd really like you to to stay on the bike for three minutes and just um, let basically let your your whole uh, metabolism norm, uh, normalize a bit more. So that's um, when your blood pressure kind of comes back to normal, your blood sugar comes back to normal. Um, and it's actually helpful to have like a gentle pedaling during that period. Um, so it, 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 we wouldn't advise that anybody cuts down the cool down and just jumps off the bike um, because it's, it's actually, you, you do go all out um, and it is a useful thing to give yourself those three minutes to just get back to normal, yeah. Got it, very cool. Um, just a couple more questions. We'll jump into some lightning round questions. Mm -hmm. You know, is there any like amazing, I mean, we know we have the data and the stats, but are there any like amazing testimonials or just anything that like st just really stands out for you and that's someone who was mm -hmm. a success story from using the bike? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, one, a testimonial I love to, to cite is, is from a rider um, fairly old, is 78, John, um, and he had heart disease, five stents in his coronary arteries, atrial fibrillation, type 2 diabetes, and was obese. Literally, you name it. Wow. Um, now, since starting with Carol, riding 26 minutes a week, John's A1C has fallen below seven for the first time since onset of type 2 diabetes. Wow. Um, his cardiopulmonary capacity is significantly up. Two other lab scores on kidney function, which were out of range for years, are now normal. And so in his own words, he's in the best physical condition that he's been in since his early 40s. And he's had significant medically demonstrable improvements in his health. Yeah. And this is after years of steady state exercise that just didn't produce the results. And here's the, here's the thing. Um, he wrote to us that he tried to convince his family and friends to try Carol. But the people he most easily convinced and converted were his internist and his cardiologist. Because <laughs> they've seen the numbers. That's great. All the yeah. others thought, oh, that's too good to be true. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't blame people when they when they hear the claims, but there is really kind of solid science behind it. And we, we understand why this works. We really understand kind of what triggers the, um, the, the, the health and fitness benefits. And so, yeah, it's very robust. That is so cool. I love that. And I just love, you know, I love hearing a story too. Like, you know, in his 40s, he was in worse shape. And it just shows like mm. the body can adapt and the body can get better. It doesn't matter how old you are. So that's just... That's just great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my own mother is is 79 by now, and she's one of our most regular. She, she doesn't, she uses it very religiously um, every other day. And uh, I mean, there may be an element because she's my mom, yeah, um, but she absolutely swears by it. And um, so unfortunately, she, she has some back pain and therefore is, is more limited in what she can do. But, but Carol is something that she can do and um, she absolutely reports that it helps her maintain cardiovascular fitness, even though kind of otherwise she's, she's quite limited in what exercise she can do. This, this helps her um, maintain, you know, as, as, as best as she can, cardiovascular fitness at, at the age of 79. Yeah, I love that. Oh, man, Ulrich, so many good things. Before we jump into some lightning round questions, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wish I had? Um, no, that's fine. I'm, I think it was a really good conversation. Um, yeah. One thing, to, to just address this, um, it's too good to be true um, yeah. thing. Maybe just to point out, we, we, we recognize that, that we make um, quite, you know, um, awesome, unbelievable claims, um, but people can go on our website and there's all the science, it links to, to all the research papers to, to be reassured that this is actually solid and robust. Um, but the other thing is we also offer, um, I think a quite industry leading 100 day 
risk-free trial period. So you, when you purchase the bike, we, we give you the right within 100 days to, to basically return it. If you don't like it, if it's not for you, we collect it and, and um, basically no questions asked. So um, if you have this nagging doubt, can this be true? Is this too good to be true? We recognize that and we, we, I think we have a, a very generous and industry leading trial um, arranged for that. Yeah, very cool. And I'm going to have Victoria send me all the, the links to all those studies and I'll put them in the show notes. So for everybody, if they want to. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, awesome stuff. All right. You ready for some lightning round questions? Sure. So, you know, if the old you could see the new you, what would the new you say? What would the new you say? Or what would the old you new? Um, what sorry. Would the new I, I, you, what would the new you say to the old you? <laughs> I probably should have started earlier. I would have been yeah. fitter and uh, could have um, <laughs> competed earlier with my boys in football. <laughs> love that. Start earlier. Yeah, I love that advice. Mm -hmm. You know, what are, what are some choices that you made that you think made you who you are today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think just starting uh, first an own company and uh, bringing, developing a new product. Uh, so many highs and also, of course, so many challenges, but certainly uh, personality and character shaping, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, probably is not for everybody and um, I'm not sure I would recommend it to everybody, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, definitely shaped me. <laughs> I love that. I had a mentor just recently tell me, um, you know, if, if you're not ready to handle like certain challenges and like highs and lows, then you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. He said, just yeah. go back to the nine to five. It's much easier yeah, for you. Exactly. 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 I love no, that. but, but you'll, you'll have the kind of with the, with the challenges come the, you know, the moments of, of triumph and, and, and of yeah. pure joy. So yeah, that's, that's part of it. I'm, I'm probably more kind of somebody who lives, um, at both ends of the, yes, yes, the scale exactly and enjoys that and enjoys that. Who's, who's someone, you know, I, I love, I always find just being connected with people like yourself in the health and wellness world, but you're doing such amazing things. Like who inspires you? Is there anybody that you follow or somebody's work or who's inspiring mm -hmm. you in that world? Yeah, sure. So, um, we have, um, Uh, let's let's name one our, our good friend Dave Dave yeah. Asprey I think he's um, he's done an amazing job um, basically popularizing um, and and mm, bringing to a broad audience kind of new ways to um, you know get fit get healthy get happy that um, uh, you know, that, that otherwise would have taken longer to, to, to get out. Um, because it's, it's quite hard to, if, if there's a mainstream narrative that's, that's just um, established, and if people have been told for, for decades and decades that they have to um, do two and a half hours and it's uh, of, of, of steady state per week, and it's, it's no pain, no gain, or you, you, that, that's, um, you, you actually need people to, you know, take those nuggets and, and kind of cool new insights and, and tell it to the world and, yeah. and, and spread the, the message. And that's incredibly important because otherwise the, the, the risk that um, kind of cool, new, innovative um, insights just get stuck is, is, is very big. It's very big because the, if there's an existing, you know, business model and an existing market, this is how gyms work. This is how, it, um, how, how would people hear? So, so we need like those evangelists and, and yeah. innovators who, who, who help spread the word. Yeah. Love that. Amen to that. I'm a big reader. Any, are mm -hmm. there any like top books, like one to three books that, you know, if that had an impact on your life that you'd recommend someone else read? Um, yes. So 
there's a there's a few. So one, which I think, uh, why we sleep. Mm. Now I'm By Matthew uh, Walker. Great book. Yes. Yes. Fantastic book. Um, and so I would kind of usually when people ask me what's like the most important for um, you know for 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 your well being and and how you how you feel for for your health and fitness and so on. Kind of obviously I'm. I'm biased and and I, I must almost say exercise right yeah but um sleep boy yeah sleep makes such uh, an enormous so so sleep exercise nutrition um kind of and then you you can argue the the order um but why we sleep i think is is really um um a fantastic book and you know, I, I think I, I, I wish I had it, uh, read it, uh, many years earlier, actually. Um, yeah. because I, I don't know when I started my career, I was, I started in a, in a company with very, very long hours and, 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 uh, um, uh, you know, like a work ethos that, that undervalued sleep greatly. And so, so having, uh, that book and with, with, in all its breadth, making the case for sleep, um, uh, extremely good, extremely good, and extremely helpful. Um, then, oh man, I'm really sorry, I'm blanking on names, but um, right. maybe I can help you out again. The um, uh, you know the guy who I'm totally <laughs> blanking. It's it's about aging and and um, the the um, a recent book. Um, I know Walter Longo's got one. And then we've got uh, that uh, one's Sergi. a good one. And I actually, uh, I actually, um, the, uh, that's, Sergi. that's one thing. There's a, there's a new one. I, I, I know Sergi, uh, I can't remember his last name, but uh, he's got one. I haven't had a chance to get into that one. I don't know if that's what you're thinking of. No, I'm the big one. And uh, I, I don't know what supplements you take, but the, um, oh man, I'm blanking completely. I'm Sergi sorry. Young, that's the guy. He's got an, uh, he's got a book on longevity that just came out. Um, You're talking about supplements. No, the the no, I'm I'm off now. I I've, <laughs> if it comes back, I'll I'll yeah. um, uh, I'll I'll raise it. But um, uh, basically, a book about why we age and and how we can reverse aging, even. Oh, um, you talking about lifespan? Yes. Sorry, okay. Man, I'm that's on fire exactly it. Lifespan yeah. by uh, Doctor Sinclair. Yes, yeah. exactly. David Sinclair. Exactly. There we go. And and that's. Um, I thought that one was extremely interesting, extremely insightful. Yeah. Um, and then, um, do you want a third? So this one, if, if, uh, if, if, if it compels you, if not, then two is great. Um, yeah, no, let, let's leave it at those two because the, until I get the name of the third, we'll, yeah. Uh, yeah, your podcast is over. <laughs> um, Sorry for that. No, no worries. Uh, just a couple more questions. Anyways, you know, you mentioned rituals earlier. Are there any rituals mm. or hacks or practices that you do on a regular basis? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so one is uh, Carol. Yeah. So that is a it's just a, a fixed part of my um, routine. Then uh, the next thing, um, uh, if I if I just go through my day, yeah, um, cold showers. I actually yeah. think cold showers is is pretty good. Um, especially this time of the year when I turn the button all the way to the right, it, it, it does get quite cold. How um, much time do you try to make sure that you're in the cold? Uh, 60 seconds. So okay. at the moment and, but like, right, like on the, on the forehead, like I, I make yeah. sure it hits me here and it hits <laughs> me. So, okay. um, I, I mean, I can't quantify it, but it, I find yeah. it first, um, you, you do get used to it. Um, and, um, I, I find it's also quite refreshing. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's refreshing, vitalizing. And, um, I, I do believe in the, the kind of cold exposure has, um, kind of good evidence, um, against it. And, and it's, it's, again, it's, it's something that you, like once you, once you get over, once you get used to it, you can actually, it's very, very, um, time efficient, um, and helpful. Mm -hmm. So, um, cold exposure, then uh, time restricted eating, I think is uh, super powerful. Um, yeah. From, so I, um, 
you know, like a 16.8 or so. I find that's something really good in terms of both what it does um, to your fitness and, and also like just day-to-day -day energy levels. Um, yeah. I, I think it's good. Um, then no processed foods. That's that's uh, that's a good advice, I think, in, in any case. And um, yeah. yeah, get enough sleep. That's so, so like some of the things. Um, Wow, we could talk more about that. Um, every now and then, meditation. That, by the way, <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> yes, but I, I find, I find, um, for like a, a short moment of meditation um, at the end of the day to 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 unwind, um, also incredibly powerful and um, like uh, for me at least, I can tell that my sleep quality improves when I do even just even just like um, five or ten minutes uh, short uh, spell of meditation um, oh wow yeah and I love all the gadgets so I have a little band then and and help with that and afterwards I track it with the ring um, so uh, yes it and it, it does help there's um, I, I think it's quite clear that's awesome oh man great stuff last but not least where can people find you and the good folks at Carol AI? Yeah, sure. So um, you can find us at carolbike.com, www.carolbike.com. That's your, um, your, your best place. We've got a lot of information on our website. Um, if you then uh, you can dive into the research or you can, you can schedule um, a call. Like we, we offer complimentary calls with, with our fitness advisors. So those are people with um, kind of unlike me, um, a degree in, in, in exercise physiology and, and who, who are happy to, to discuss kind of, um, you know, your, your health and fitness objectives and how, how you could fit Carol into the bike. And then we could, if you, if you wanted to, to see it somewhere, we could also refer you to, um, you know, not not your everyday gym, but kind of like innovative gyms that that have Carol, where where you could have a look at it. But you can also just uh, with our trial get one and see whether it works for you. Yeah, very cool, awesome stuff, Ulrich. Thanks for being on the show, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic. <laughs>